Paula Community, it's Paula Vasquez here with another episode of Blender Today Live, uh, live from Amsterdam. It's kind of summer here, we are back with the questions, another week of questions. We are going to be splitting this show, if you haven't followed lately, into the, the new features of Blender th throughout the week in the smaller videos and then the questions in here in, the, in, in, this, in this weekly meeting. These uh, meetings, at some point, they're going to migrate towards the Blender Studio, the Blender Animation Studio, because that's where the magic happens. At the moment, I'm still in doing it at home, so um, so yeah, it's, it's harder to get to get guests. So no guests today. It's just just uh, me, it's just us though, it's just not just me, us. All right, let's uh, let's get to it. There's 20 questions. We're going to be answering. Try to answer most of them. So let's uh, let's get to it. Let's uh, ASMR. No, I'm not. I don't have the voice for that. So, first question. You, that ninja. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? How's it going? When undo system will when undo system will stop undoing interface changes like pivot point, transform orientations, proportional editing, snapping, brush settings, etc. It's very frustrating when performing an action and then undo also undoing that settings. I I actually ask the developer that fixed the that made the undo better in 2.83 that effort is actually just like the entire team basically but mainly it was one developer and i asked him about it and he says uh, yes that is uh, not a, it's a known issue um it's not a walk in the park to fix it and it's probably now more obvious because the other undo is like the undo of the entire blender is faster now so um, now it's getting more eyes the other side of the undo. What, what uh, you that ninja is uh, saying is that unfortunately since forever, since many many versions, uh, since, since I don't know, very many years ago, um, there are some UI level changes that get undoed, such as for example when you uh, when you like say you you move the object here and you change the pivot point to instead of rotating from this point, from the center of the object, moving it to the um, to, to this cursor. So, if you change it with the with the dot shortcut, and then I move it, and then I undo, you would expect the movement to be undoed. Indeed, and and done. <laughs> but it's also undoing the uh, pivot point, and that is very annoying when you pile those changes up. Yeah, like while you're using blender it gets very annoying i personally what i do is just i i often just like do another another step so i like that i know i shouldn't be saying workarounds but that's the workaround i do personally i just do another step of whatever and then it will undo just that um that is yeah that is a known issue it's, it will be fixed eventually but right now we don't have enough developers the developer that is uh, that could work on this many like three four core developers could take care of it but like one is uh, fixing the performance in making the uh, the soft surf faster for example open um, um this other developer is working on library overrides and and like asset management and all of that then the other developer is also speeding up cycles it's like so many areas in blender and so few people that can could look into these things so uh yeah i mean i i, I shouldn't be like promoting right away like as an advertisement but yeah really this is what ha makes blender hire developers so uh this is what we the only thing that it can be done at the moment just to speed these things up is just to get more people involved um the second question. So I have <laughs> my idea today. I didn't. Uh, I, I had issues compiling Blender, and somebody here in the chat as well. But my idea for today was to have basically down here, like poking out a little Blender timeline, that I would go from zero to twenty, and then go to like question number two. And uh, so I, I don't know. Well, maybe it was a very stupid idea, <laughs> but it was just so people watching from home can. Um, can see when they see the video it's like okay in which question maybe you could just also just add it to blend to to the stream itself anyway let's see i was gonna do it better than that but i i had issues compiling there's something with open image the noise uh that is it's failing but but okay 
let's uh, move on. Lapis C says, Hi, Paolo, the Undisputed Flender thing. Thank you. And guests. I don't have any guests today. There came some really cool things out of Seagraph. Out of Seagraph uh, 2020. So, one of them I took notice in a specific is a soft body solver to rule them all. It has an open source C++ implementation under MIT license. I was wondering if things like this are to be considered for incorporation into the Blender solver family. Um, so the first answer is like anything that is uh, has a, a license, a permissive license, could be um, uh, could be implemented again. Uh, papers like this, they come out from Seagraph every single year. Every year there is new new stuff. It's when, when the, the graphics community, you know, like they show the work they're done, their, their investigations. And unfortunately, um, well, fortunately, actually, since ev most of these things are all like free for everybody to grab and use, uh, many of those made it into Blender. Even some of them, even I can't remember exactly which one, but I remember one case where it was added first to Blender than other commercial softwares because Blender has a. Uh, this comes out in July, maybe a bit uh, before uh, that the paper is announced. Then uh, Blender has a new release every three four months. So for the big softwares to catch up, uh, they 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 release once a year, right? So they have to wait until the next year. So actually, Blender, I don't know, remember which one. Some soft surf, soft uh, SSS. Not sure. Anyway, it was a very good um, good case. This looks fantastic. Looks amazing. And uh, yay for more solvers. Um, I hope that yeah. <laughs> I hope this could be implemented. Um, I, maybe in the case of the solver, it's not too bad. But some of the uh, of these awesome papers that you see from SIGGRAPH and stuff, they do look amazing. But it's a very controlled environment. The one day uh, some of these tests happen in the solver is different. If you can just shovel some data and then come get back some data maybe that's fine you know maybe you have to take care of like keeping the uvs and keeping the um, vertex color and the weight painting and all the vertex loops and the shape keys maybe it's when dealing with this kind of data you have there, there's a lot more to take care of than just grabbing a paper and dropping it into a uh, blender but um yeah this case maybe could be could be considered actually they shared Oh, actually, in the comments, maybe, okay, if you want to help this thing to happen, um, just saying, just saying, maybe why don't we use our community powers and we ask the people doing this to maybe make a prototype in Blender, right? Blender is open source, you can get the access to all the source code, so maybe, maybe that's a good idea. So maybe leaving in comments and saying, hey, will you also be in Blender and upvoting or something like that. Not spam, don't spam, please. Just uh, just as a good, just like, hey, it would be nice. Not the typical Blender fanboy, let's not be that. But uh, yeah, just asking, um, would be nice. Actually, let me see, this is absolutely amazing. I wonder if the kind of project is compatible and this is what we should kind of be doing. Very, very nice. And then it should be possible to develop a Blender plugin for IPC. I, right now we're working on a Ahu oh, Why a Houdini? Uh, I mean, I guess it's industry standard, so it makes sense. But uh, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, they are making a plugin for Houdini. Maybe, 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 maybe developing plugins for Blender is not as easy. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's. I'm not a. Remember, I'm not a developer. I can't really say that about the status of making things for Blender. But maybe, you know, maybe Blender, the the Houdini SDK, whatever, is much more. I bet is much more developed for uh, C plugins than Blenders. Um, so yeah, what you can do usually is like what Lapis C did, which is asking the developers about it when uh, asking for like, hey, can we have a I know Adobe is uh, something After Effects plugin for Blender. Like we should ask them, not uh, not Blender, um, the people with the resources. In this case, they don't. I guess they don't have the resources, but they're smart. <laughs> um, hi everyone. Next question. Let's go to the question number three. 
here. Uh, hi everyone, I would like to know if Blender will have a Substance Painter-like alternative. It's probably one of the few things missing for me. I saw this work around and it seems that Blender could actually compete with Substance if someone works in it. Um, I'll also, could you take a look at this summary of code? Let's, uh, let's see. So, um, PBR Texture Painting from 2018 by Yana uh, Jayanam. Jayanam, how do you, are you guys subscribed to this uh, channel? It's very, very nice. Very, like, down to the point, even covers some Python stuff and um, very, very nicely explained features. Um, and here, apparently, he is doing some painting, PBR painting, which it actually if you if you look at blender's capabilities in like in terms of pbr and um in in like showing and editing and it's very capable of having a kind of substance painter like um results right it's missing the tools <laughs> though and um i i only seen to i have never used a substance painter i only seen videos of, of it and it looks like it really makes your life easier to make procedural stuff to make things you can reuse um maybe in the end you end up with more more um uh, like uh, maps that you want um but uh having the flexibility for that it's actually the blender will have eventually um, the developer of the, the sculpt section area in Blender, the, the miracle human being of Paolo Dovarro, he's working on uh, vertex paint um, in sculpt, sculpt vertex paint, which is much faster, it has uh, more tools, more integrations with the rest of the sculpting tools, and the goal is to have him working, he's actually the module owner of uh, the Blender sculpt um, module <laughs> in Blender, so it's called texture and paint, so I bet there are really good things coming from there. We could look at it in the developer.blender.org Blender developer.org and there should be sculpt paint and texture here so in here you're gonna see that this module it has its own Blender chat, it has its own section, it has some of uh, a little bit of a of a roadmap, brush management, cloth brush is, is, um, is getting almost done. Multi-resolution work is being done until 2.81 and then skull vertex paint plus brush management. This is this brush management brush management depends partially on the asset manager itself. So yeah, it's um it's, it's oh, everything is tied together. So the sun is changing so much, my mind getting blown out. Hello, Pablo. I love your shirt. Can I have it? Uh, I, I, I'm afraid not, <laughs> because this is a Blender uh, Conference 2016 T-shirt. So every year, not 2017. Um, every year, except this year, we have a Blender Conference, at least one Blender Conference in Amsterdam, and we make graphics for it and. Uh, this one was made by Andy, Andy Goralchik, director of Spring, and um, he's working at the Institute since forever. He also made, uh, for all the years, um, like these animals and creatures, and every year we make t-shirts. So we uh, we can do this kind of happy, uh, I don't know, stuff. You know why? Is it a bee? It's for BeeCon, Blender Conference. And also because it's of the hexagon and the uh, Blender Foundation logo is the as an hexagon with many hexagons. Did you know? The more you know. All right. Next, um, I actually like that we I can expand a little bit on some of these questions and just just hang out with you. When is the 2.9 release? Asks a boy157. If you want, you can go to blender.org slash dashboard. This is an, a, an easy to remember. Blender.org slash dashboard. It's going to take you to these live streams or the press releases, developer notes, or when it's, uh, what is the current release? If you're lost uh, about what is the latest release, this is 283.2 actually. And Blender 2.90 is coming out August 2020. You can read more here. If you click on schedule, you're going to get the full list of dates. When um, uh, we're preparing the release, when is uh, the final release. If everything comes 
if everything's all right. Do you know, by the way, that there's a new Blender LTS uh, update that came out this week? Yesterday, actually. Blender 2.83.2 is out, so if you were having some issues with 2.83, you should update. It's very recommended. It's stable. It has 15 new bug fixes on top of the 33 bug fixes of 2.83.1. On top of the 1,250 of 2.83, <laughs> so very stable. Let's uh, let's move on. Let's see. Um, oh yeah, the you you sent me this link to Dev Talk Soft Body Simulation. Yes, the Soft Body. I need to make video. I want to make videos of the um, projects for Google Summer of Code. The Soft Body Simulation is one of them, which you can follow the progress here on Dev Talk. And the developer is doing a really good job on uh, on keeping uh, the community updated on like what is he doing this week, what is he working on, what's the status, and even making a little video. Look at this nice. Armadillo hanging hang, hang loose the definition form of hang loose <laughs> Particle system update. Yes, there is a particle system update coming Actually, it's experimental you can try it already, but it's experimental. So next question. Thank you by the way everybody that is actually um, replying to the comments because is it, this is this is a nice part of the, having the questions before because the community can get involved and everybody can help each other because I really can't follow everything on all the topics and having the community to help and uh, giving feedback or like actually on when we were talking about the previous soft body simulation um, there was here somebody mentioned already the new soft body who will sum it of code so yay thank you community any updates on the asset manager? Yes, there are updates. There is a branch called Asset Metadata. I couldn't compile Blender today. There is something going on with the with the uh, Open Image Denoise library for some reason. But there is a branch already that you can compile, and you can go as far as creating an asset. It will make the uh, it will make a. Um, a, uh, like a thumbnail of the asset that you have and it's gonna let you browse it so it's very limited but it's the baby steps towards an asset manager like you can create an asset what is an asset can be anything uh, you're gonna be able to for the uh, for the moment at the moment you can only um, access via the um, the outliner and you can go and do like right click create an asset it's not here it is not the branch but you're gonna find here uh, um, if you want to play with it you're gonna find a um, button that will say create an asset it will take a render of it too it's gonna do like a workbench render from a camera try to position try to be smart about fitting the whole object in there the whole collection even and um, yes that is what works at the moment and I should be making a video rather soon just to see how it is um, the yes actually andrew peel this um this um developer is in contact with um julian eisel the developer that is working on the asset manager so don't worry they are in touch they um this is this everybody wants to have the best and the greatest asset manager actually here you can read more asset manager basics um actually yeah where where you were linking like any updates on the asset manager you link to this task, and in this task is where the magic happens. You can. Uh, this is the task that is updated by the developer, which you can see here at the bottom. You're gonna see that Julian has been updated. So every time he makes a change, he's being updated. He's also been working on the weekend. Shouldn't be doing that, but uh, he's actually ahead of time now uh, of the of the schedule. Sorry, and. This is no. Uh, there was a, a commit that actually had the an image of the the creation of an, of an asset. So yeah, it is pretty exciting. You can create assets in Blender and a branch. Next, well, I think I got lost already. I didn't count the questions. So one, this is two, this is number three, and then uh, number four. And then we are in five already. 
One quarter in. Aslan Tami Tam Jam Giri asks, Hola Pablo, I have a few ideas. I'm gonna wet my throat with some mate. I have a few ideas that I post uh, them in right click select, but I don't know if this is a proper way to send them or I have to post in developer talk too. I know Max script, scripting language in Max, but new to Python. And I think I'm a little bit old to learn something new from the ground up. No. No, Python is is the easiest one to read and learn and if you know some really old language, Python it's gonna it just makes sense. Once you see it, it's like ah it's it's easy to, to get into. Uh, at least on the basic level. Like even artists can make no I'm kidding, I'm a even artists can make add-ons in Blender. I'm an artist, I made add-ons in Blender. Just uh, not trying to, <laughs> to, to yeah, to make it look like even artists, but it even artists really. Some ideas I really like, like the simple one. Let's see what it's simple. Multi shape kit target doesn't sound simple already. Shape kits are awesome technique in all 3D packages in Blender. What is really missing is the ability to add multi target to a one shape key. As you can see in the simple GIF below the blue eye have a multi-target in its shape key as the targets are in row next to it green eyes so it is opening smoothly without penetrating yes i ran into the issue many times when making eyelids so uh, for example say you you have two shape keys one is the eye close and one is the eye open if you just go from one to the other uh it, this is what happens it tries to uh, to go from close to open um there is no intermediate so you have to make one in the middle and then make the closed Shape key go into the middle one and then middle one to the open one. I'm explaining this in case people um, not don't know um, what this means. Multi sharpe the key sharpe multi shape key target. So let's see the proposal. I know there is some trick to do this in Blender. Yes, there is with drivers and changing the the range of the drivers. It's not the most uh, user friendly though, but it's possible. It needs to be clear and easy way to do with all the shape key functionality supported like mirror, etc. So, so it's not so simple already. So for the UI part, I think that it would be nice to be able to select a few shape keys and turn them to a new shape key or just a group with a slider that automatically adds all selected targets with a proper percentage to act as main slider. Okay, this alone, like having uh, <laughs> um, nested properties in the uh, in this kind of widget, this is called UI list in Blender, that alone is like a project on its own. Um, <clears throat> it's, um, it, it's we, we don't have that in Blender, the concept of nested elements, which would be amazing. Like if we could have a group of UVs or a group of vertex colors, well, we can only have eight vertex colors, but you get the point. It would be nice to have this, um, but this is a completely different different project on its own. And uh, yeah, it would be it would be awesome to have this. It would be pretty amazing. There is here some kind of way of doing it. Apparently, I just do it in naming base system, and then it looks like it's using an an add-on, a shape editor. Um, yeah. Not sure how that uh, would work. It's not a simple though, um, and it's not something to do with Python. I think it should be done built in inside of Blender. And the other one, and some hard to script like this one: energy brushes for grease pencil. Let's see the second one: energy brushes for grease pencil. Um, some great uh, simulation tools for secondary animation effects to shape at uh, auto. Second animation effect, shapes at Autodesk Research Group. Will be really useful for Gris Pencil. Watch the idea below. For more information, see here and the research here. So let's see. I hope they don't have advertisement here, otherwise I'm gonna uh, get ads on this video. Did you notice that the Blender Foundation YouTube channel doesn't have ads of any kind? Isn't that nice? Uh, so okay, apparently the um, this is a way to paint so you paint energy brushes, you paint and then you have direction and it's like a wind-ish kind of a thing and then you can apply shape and then you make the shape wobble that's pretty nice 
um, control, control X, and then yes, you can control it, you can combine effects, you can you can combine effects, you can have two going in two directions. It's actually pretty pretty nice. I uh, but however, however, look at this sim how simple this um, this system is. How it was it was basically made for this. I believe this it's cool as a like a like a small like an idea. She was like, hey, yeah, it would be nice, but this is maybe not the best example of a proposal for Blender of a right-click select proposal. Why? Because this proposal basically takes like, hey, let's do what this software is doing. It doesn't involve Blender in it. When I look at this as a Blender user, and as many Blender users right here, I bet they would be like, hey, no, this is Grease Pencil with force fields. That's a Blender way of thinking. You should think of whatever it's there already. We, we already have force fields. We have a full list of them. We have, um, we have for example, drag, fluids, and um, vortex, and wind, and forces. So we have this. They just don't work with Chris Pencil yet. So when making this kind of uh, proposals, it, we shouldn't just like, hey, look at this video, let's add it to Blender. Because maybe some developer somewhere is inspired and goes and implements something like this, but instead of doing it the Blender way, which is having everything connected. Um, because if you implement energy brushes for Gris Pencil like this, and then uh, you want to apply to a mesh, what do you do? You have to, what do you do? <laughs> you have to apply uh, the energy brush to a mesh, but we already have four fields. So yeah. When making this proposal, please try to do a little bit of research on how it would be the Blender way, because that's way more appealing than just looking at a video of another uh, of of a research of a, or another um, another app. Um, it's a great concept, though. I think we should uh, definitely have that at some point. It's very nice to to mix physics with the Grease Pencil. I think it, it will be really mind blowing. Um, Let's uh, move on. Next question. This was a five. This is number six. Slemon asks. Let me have another drink. It's yerba mate, by the way. Again, I like to clarify because it looks super weird and South American. I like this one today, though. The, I, I left the other one at, at the studio, but this one has a little llama in it. It's like a little llama. I don't know if you get to see it. And it's a, yeah, it's a llama. My dad sent it to me. And my mom. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Blender's 2.8 icons have always been hard to see compared to 2.7 for me. I kind of agree with you. Let's see. Um, the flat white icons. Okay, well, whoa, 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 people are shouting in the <laughs> in the chat because <laughs> I said llama. Yeah, llama because I want everybody to understand. Actually, it's not a llama. It's a wanako. A wanako is a cousin of a llama ish but it's also uh, a cousin of a camel if you would say like a very far away cousin that you uh, forget to invite to parties well that is a camel compared to a wanako compared to a vicuña a vicuña also vicuña oh you get the idea vicuña al vicuña alpaca llama wanako camel all family uh let's move on um Side topic. Blender 2.8 icons have always been hard to see compared to 2.7 for me. The flat white icons don't seem great for readability. Recently, Windows has been moving away from this icon of icons. The new ones are mostly flat with just a little bit of color and gradients. Could we please see a change like this in Blender for accessibility? You can see the comparison for all icon styles compared to the new one here. So I guess this is how Windows used to look. In, back in the dark, horrible eras of Metro, the, uh, the, the square styles, I guess. And uh, so this is how it looks nowadays, apparently. Um, it looks much, I, I bet, uh, yeah, for me, it looks, it looks nicer. However, I, I, I don't know, the, these kind of icons 
these are ugly, but the blender kind of icons that are more shape based have the advantage so they can be themed, right? You can you can theme it, you can make the color you want. And also I think um, the shape, it like if you don't have an icon, then the shape is you're forced by the shape to be a bit more more clear. Um, I do believe we need color though. We need color in some some areas, especially like modifiers. This list is insane. Um, I always forget which one was what, like modify, generate, deform, physics. I I think we should have some kind of color for this, um, at least in between the columns. Or I mean, I mean, I don't know. This this menu should have a search already. It's be <laughs> what are we waiting for? Um, uh, search for this, and also. Other areas inside of Blender because it means that if you have the same icon that is using two different con uh, contexts, you could have them colored. Um, like for example, here you have the color for the adding the object, but also you have in the outliner you have a different color because this is an actual object. So that's that's how you can tell them apart. The um, so yeah, that concept and also something that we never really think that much about is about how long does it take to design this as to design uh, you know something fairly more simple as more geometric japes uh, this 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 takes a while and we already have missing icons uh, inside of blender that just just don't have an icon because they take time to be done um, the same way why I believe that having the single column layout in Blender, um, like single column, it's in one way it's more readable, but on the other hand, it's also way easier for developers to just make this layout, just just do it, group it, sort of making sense, and that's it. In Blender 2.7, uh, you would have like. Why do you think we ended up with this this nightmare of layout in 2.7? It's because it was it was designed by developers mainly. Uh, as you can see here, like there is uh, labels that starts like halfway and just misaligned everywhere. And yeah, um, if you give uh, if you make it easier to developers and also add-ons, if you make an add-on, then it's easier to comply with the rest of Blender. All right, let's uh, move on. Thank you also for the questions here. Actually, people are replying and saying that it's easier to to be uh, to recolor and stuff. The one of the comments here says that it would be nice for Blender to be able to change the colors, and I also agree with that. It should be possible, but it shouldn't be something that the Blender Foundation has to manage. It's already uh, slow enough. To, if you add a feature, you have to add a manual and like manual entry and documentation. If you also have to add the design, of, wait for the design of an icon, and then uh, the color of an icon and the layout, it just adds more and more layers. So all right, let's uh, let's move on. I'm taking it very, <laughs> very relaxed this, and I'm only not even halfway. Uh, okay, number seven, Gilberto Rodriguez says. What is it planned for 2.91 and 92 UV editing? I'm very curious after seeing in, on the roadmap, here are my suggestions. And there should be an operation for selected flips and a bunch of suggestions, like pick a, a, at a setting for specifying the texel density, pick the shortest path. Uh, yeah. Hey, did you know by the way that there is a new module member of the UV module in Blender. These are great, great news, which I am preparing a video for. Um, let me let me find the here the link. So I am actually preparing a video on new. Yes, please sit down. Don't fall. Hold your pants. New improvements to the UV editor. The UV editor is now um, it's, it has a new member of the of the artist uh, section of the members, which is Daniel Beisted. He is the author of all the EV PR that you've seen over the last few years, like the Good Night Claire and the Tiger, and is really uh, he has tons of experience, and he is taking on the task of naming 
I don't know if you've seen here because of my face, but he, like he went into the travel of going through all of the issues and reporting those issues and proposing like this is the issue for example Daniel Weiss amazing we have him, we had him here live on the on the stream once um, or twice and you can see here he mentioned okay this is a starting point this is what happens this is undesired and this is desired that is a dream for a developer to see because it's a clear example something that needs to be fixed what's the problem what's to fix it and someone willing to to test it um, someone willing to like okay here's a patch compile it it takes time try it and all of that and that with a bunch of issues uh, in in blender how to how to improve it like mirror UVs what is what is expected what is expected result and this is priceless so great news because since this is making life the, for developers easier, it's also making it easier to fix and to add the improvements. So much so that there are already some improvements, and this is a spoiler of what I'm going to show in the uh, in the um, in the video next week. But there is a new tool for ripping parts of your of your UV. So, for example, say you want to rip somewhere here, just press the same shortcut as you press it here. Or you can use this tool for people complaining about the shortcuts. You can just rip parts of your of your mesh. So you can click, drag, and then you just 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 do it the same way you would do it with the oops fail. Ah, because it doesn't have a more corners. Yet here this one you can just move it. So yeah, this is amazing that developers and artists are working together to improve the UV editor. Super super good news. Also. While you comment that, um, so exactly, if the, to answer your question, what are the plans? Um, no really like, like roadmap, what is in 9.1 and what is in 9.2, but these fixes that I just shown, these are in master. So, and the tools that I shown, they're in master because they're small enough. So they will be in 2.90 even. And uh, you can see here more of the uh, UV editing project here in, uh, and you can see more what's, what's gonna happen, what it's planned and how to proceed and just as a little gift here pick shortest past for quickly marking seams this is already possible i think let me let me double check before breaking your heart um path selection support so it is shortest path pick there is a new shortcut it's control click and you should be able to uh yeah it's a new operator in that matches the one in the 3d viewport so actually one of the changes here in your list i think it's already done i think sorry if it's not and i'm confusing you but i think it is so yeah great great news um let's uh move on number eight number eight is uh Mikeche. i know ev has been getting some love lately with motion motion blur some love what that is a lot of love that is like getting married with motion blur i would really like to see eevee get a proper shadow catcher is it coming anytime uh, in the near future it I, I can't say like it's coming with a with a date it's eventually gonna come that's a that's a plan is it's it's in the roadmap but it's not a priority right now priority again is to have um EV working on more graphics cards and get uh, Vulkan support. So moving into uh, dropping OpenGL and then moving into Vulkan. Um, so that way we're gonna have more features because I bet the day you add Shadow Catcher, next comment is gonna be, I know uh, Eve is getting some love with the Shadow Catcher, but when are we getting bake support and about uh, what a blah blah? And it's like, <laughs> it never ends. So. Vulkan is gonna uh, allow it to make uh, to, to, to make more improvements and even faster improvements and things that are not even possible right now. Next uh, question, number nine. Hi Paolo, thanks for the great um, communication to do. Hi, thank you. One simple question. When support for groups is going to be available? It's quite a huge missing feature in my honest opinion. Uh, yes, groups it's um, like the real groups, the ones that you can 
yeah, real groups. It's not uh, available in Blender. It was never available. Blender had in the back in 2.7 the concept of group, uh, but it was basically what a collection is right now. It's just the same. So what are you exactly missing um, from collections to be groups? Is it just the fact that you that you maybe could like click and then select the whole group and then go inside of it? What is I'm 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 asking because I um I'm not familiar with groups in other software, so I'm I'm really curious. So what is the feature that collections in Blender are lacking at the moment to um to be on top, like to be at the level of groups in other softwares? Um, is it just a way of managing it, or um, is it maybe um, for light groups? But we're using collections for that. Um, yeah, light groups. I'm also missing it pain in the chat um, I'm, I'm very curious thank you uh, if you can answer number 10 Daniela Palma asks or Daniel La Palma you have to next time please let me know the way to pronounce it since there is work being done on UVs for 2090 any news on this right click select uh, let's see what your right click select highlight the UV selection in 3d view um, I'm not sure actually would be nice to to have a look at the at the um, at the list of at the workboard to see if it's somewhere over here. If it's not, maybe we can remind the developers about this highlight, like highlight. I can't search it here, so maybe it's something worth adding over there. Next question number eleven. We switch into the second section of the show. Forty minutes in. <laughs> I hope I don't get too far, too much uh, over time. Um, hello, Pablo. Question: What do you use Blender for? Whoa, whoa! Question for me. I'm uh, I got caught off guard. Okay, <clears throat> I need to I need to to think about this one. All right, from <laughs> so not that I not that I don't think about the other ones, but uh, some of them are very automatic. From an artist's perspective, I mean, or is it more of let's try this new tool and show it around? Also, why don't you stream longer? Maybe that way, these Q&As, you could watch videos and give opinion. Uh, that's so, sort of like what I've been doing today. I actually went to see some of the videos. Uh, of course, if the video is like 6, 20, 15 minutes long, it's not going to be possible. But um, but yeah, I, I guess I could just stream longer or or just do the long version somewhere on Twitch or something. Is that... Is it that if, if I make a one and a half hour video, two hour video, I just, nobody's going to click on that. Um, and we need more people to know that we're doing this. So please share this, kind of. Let the world know that we're doing Q&A every week. Uh, and the question itself is, what do you use Blender for? For an artist, from an artist's perspective, I mean. Um, or is it, let's try this new tool and show it around. Uh, no. I, well, yes and no. So I was... Uh, I, I got involved with Blender because I, I, I like doing characters when I was a kid. I like doing, I don't know if I'm going to find anything. Um, but yeah, I, when I was a kid, I, I was, well, characters, Blender, maybe. So yeah, I, I met the, la, the Llama de Guanaco in, uh, I made this. With, this is my latest <laughs> character design I made, um, um, Koro. Um, but I also made uh, like this little bird over here and... Uh, um, some other characters that I made back when I was a little kid. This is Durano, also another character. So yeah, I, I used to make this kind of stuff and I would love to continue doing it. I, I just haven't done it in in a very long time. I then moved to do lighting and rendering. I did lighting for um, pretty much all the re more recent, uh, well, all the open movie projects except a couple in, since Sintel. Sintel was my first project as a lighting artist. I love doing lighting and it's, a, it's something that I hope I can continue doing. But at home, I am um, doing experiments and stuff. Last last week I was, uh, I did, uh, I, I downloaded, I, someone shared from Sketchfab, someone shared the, the, a, the, Object. No, it's not the only the, the object there. Yeah, the the object file of a uh, passage in in London, which is the called the Lake, and it's awesome. It's all like uh, full of graffiti. Actually, if you if you just see it in 
in uh, in solid mode is, is easier to see um, but um, it's uh, amazing I love this place and I was actually planning to go to to London so I saw this and was like okay let's do something so I went ahead and did did a thing but I wanted to make it like eerie you know like you're actually exploring so I went ahead and did this thing um, but this also helps me to, to try and test blender stuff where, where is the here where is the David Bowie sign here let's dance all right um, completely off topic but uh, that's what I what I do yeah I just blender for a little bit of everything for my job now is trying tools and UI development and stuff. Next question, number 12. When launching a script, when I change from modes, the script does not continue to run when I go from object to edit mode regarding selecting parts of a mesh and changing it. Will this be fixed anytime soon? Actually, this question is answered by Raumetry and you can uh, actually thank you very nice Raumetry for replying to this one because I wasn't aware of the limitations and where to find them. Here you can read about the limitations of the operators and that's why it's uh, it's not possible. Let's uh, continue. Number 13. Are you planning a version of Blender for iPad? Uh, no, currently no. There is no, it's not on the plans. But that being said, um, Blender, um, I don't know if you've seen actually here. Thanks again, Christian, for sharing the answer. Uh, in the latest Apple keynote on, on uh, the Apple uh, W, uh, the, the developers conference, they mentioned that they want to support, uh, yeah, they, that they are making a new kind of, of, of silicon basically, of like a, a chip. They're switching from Intel to their own stuff. And that is a nightmare for every software out there because it's you have to basically change a bunch of things to make it work on that hardware. However, Apple themselves made a list of open source projects where they are going to uh, do the uh, yeah, we're gonna to help to bring that compatibility between started. blender between other softwares and their silicon and they say they confirmed this they made the initial work needed to get the most popular open source projects and among the most popular projects they highlighted blender isn't it nice I mean, if it's about popular, they could have highlighted <laughs> Python and uh, FFmpeg. I think they are more popular than Blender. But I'm really happy to see that, actually, that they actually um, they support. There is a patch apparently going on around just to 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 make Blender work in that hardware. So once that is done, and uh, Vulkan support is added, and their Metal API connection between uh, Vulkan and Metal for Blender is done maybe there could be a chance however remember that it's not just about making a software work on a tablet it's the interaction all of that is just another project on its own um, so yeah there are many 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 uh, things to do to to get up to that level uh, question number 14, Sant Leffer, Vladimir. Do you recommend any good guide in sculpting using the new workflow of the awesome Pablo Barro that he's playing in his talk last year? Even a time lapse using that workflow would be very useful. Um, as always, I want to congratulate you on the work doing Blender today. Thank you, Sant Leffer. Very nice. Um, so there are some answers actually already here. I don't know of a specific tutorial, but I, but I bet the like what here what uh, Pablo is, is explaining it was very technical though uh, very technical which is nice because you don't usually get this kind of presentations but the workflow itself with the tools I bet there are any tutorials for sculpting uh, that you can try here um, that you can find on YouTube uh, Blender Sculpt 2.8 there must be uh, stuff look at that Ask and K Diane Am four months ago um, I bet the guy from Jan's cult he, he doesn't make any videos anymore or what um, but yeah there will be videos if you if you look Roberto Roche is he back wow 
he's an amazing sculptor that I has I haven't seen in a while in the community. But um, maybe the um, um, Zacharias also. Um, anyway, next question. Hi, Pablo. Number 15. Thanks to you and the team to allow Blender be greater each day. Thank you and the community. Just this in time to ask me a question. What is the, pl the plan for the trimming um, tool in sculpt mode? Um, let's see. What is the plan for the streaming tool sculpt mode? Is it blocked by the advance of the new booleans? I let me check. I ask this to Pablo. Let me see if he could, if he managed to, because it, it was early um, before lunch. I left a message, and um, so the answer is that the patch is pretty much ready, and is using the solver currently in Blender, so it fails very often, uh, eight out of ten times. So, uh, you could try it, but it doesn't really work for anything. Um, like, work for, like, it doesn't really work very well. So, as soon as the new solver is there, it it could be uh, running in a matter of days. Oh, it, it depends completely on where the boolean is in. So, that is awesome. So, that's actually pretty, pretty nice. The trimming tool, it's... Uh, the, the current system for booleans is the problem. So exactly when you were you were right actually the new boolean branch, it's um, it's what is stopping it. So good news and bad news at the same time. But good news that it, once is that is implemented, uh, many areas are gonna be um, gonna benefit from it. Question number sixteen by David Vernaglione. Hello uh, guys. Thanks for the continued development. 2.9 looks so neat and powerful. My question regards snapping. After it being introduced for Edge Slide, are there any chances that snapping will be possible also when making loop cuts? Sometimes I find myself in situations where I need the loop cut to be in the same place or axis. I know I could do a loop cut and then use Edge Slide for snapping, but why not bend the two actions into one? Uh, that doesn't sound extremely difficult. Um, I, again, this is just an artist talking, so <laughs> the issue is that, no, the issue, the, uh, the reason why is because the, the loop cut tool, it's actually two tools, it's a macro, it has two tools in, in one, loop cut and slide, so maybe it's just, maybe it's not that hard, maybe we should mention this to the developers, so yeah, maybe it's worth mentioning, could it be reported as a bug report? Like this guy as a feature request? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. I, I will try and remember to ask a developer and uh, Germano Cavalcante about it. Let's um, continue. Um, Hero asks question number C seventeen. Well, we're getting there. Seventeen. Hero, G draw. Hey Paulo, is separate saving of viewport settings? being considered for implementation. We needed to keep matcaps, shadows, and other stuff between sessions without the rest of the UI as they are more specific to the scene um, document than the layout. Uh, thanks. Yes and no. Um, yes, in the sense that when Blender 2.98 Blender 2.8 was... when the new viewport project in Blender 2.8 was started to become a reality. It's like, okay, how do we make it? Uh, the overlay idea started to pop. It's like, okay, we need some kind of overlays because we have all these modes that we can combine. And then also there was a discussion is like, okay, what modes do we need? Do we need wireframes? I don't know if you remember uh, if you were involved in Blender back in the 2.8, early 2.8 days where there was no wireframe mode and people were afraid that it will never come back. And there was runs and riots and like burning uh, no, no, nothing there was nothing was burning, but it was a big discussion because what is wireframe mode? okay, it's wireframe, but do we also have uh, x-ray on and off? which overlays do we have? so there was a the the original idea for this mode was to have presets and basically what you activate here it would be just presets the wireframe is just a preset so if you combine those those modes you can have anything you can have combine anything and and just make your own modes 
that would be awesome it's one of the ideas if I, unfortunately never made it through because we had to take we have to make a 2.8 <laughs> we had to finish 2.8 and release it but the idea of the presets might come back with the asset manager and presets for the viewport it's important uh, also so they can be um, maybe synchronized between two workspaces remember or even two view edit two viewports remember that now these two viewports are two completely different things um, there are some patches there for for making it like synchronized between them but um but they are different they are completely different their own settings so yeah presets and synchronization it's 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 in the developers heads so hopefully will be done eventually number 18 Boris Wilson hey Pablo and guests greeting from Brazil hola could you talk about blender and motion capture I will try I'm not super familiar with everything that is available at the moment so okay I have heard some months ago about the core data motion project yes they actually have a uh, they have the Kickstarter and this is open source um, motion capture in like made like really by people that love blender so they even gave a presentation at the at the blender developer uh, blender sorry blender conference so they are really serious about integrating it with blender and making it open source so integrating with an add-on so it's uh, it's really a, a project that you should check out and you should try to support if you can and if you're into motion capture because it's it's really bringing open source uh, motion capture to the open source world and they have blender on the top of their of their priority for like connecting making war making it work i always need a computer the other so super interesting if you're into it consider it core data motion capture made yours next Oh, sorry, next, actually, there's a... Uh, <laughs> Blender wouldn't have a, a system, so it was possible. I'm gonna leave the... the... here, the link, so people in the chat can check it out. Let's see. Um, you know, uh, like the makers and markers and all the stuff, tracking and solving markers with multiple cameras. I know that it's possible to do this in, car in Blender currently, but it's only with one footage at a time. By linking the marker to an empty, but with multiple cameras, it is possible to track not only X and Y axis, but also Z axis, making way more accurate for motion capture animation. This guy in 2015, well, you really made your, did your research. I actually wasn't aware of, uh, of that second paragraph. This I actually have seen in the past. I have seen it. It's, um, 2015 is not that long ago. This. If someone can find this add-on, it shouldn't be too hard to bring it up to the Blender 2.8 or 9. And the API changed, but it's usually not that uh, time-consuming to update. There are even tutorials about it, about upgrading and documentation about about that. Um, but now the add-on seems to be broken. Yes, this could easily be fixed by the community. Um, Anyways, it would be a great idea to implement something like this. Yes, it would be. It would be great. I have no experience in this, and I don't know exactly at the moment. Um, the VFX module in Blender is also connected to the sequencer, and I think the sequencer needs more love at the moment uh, to get it up to speed than the uh, than the motion tracker at the moment. And the developer that is working on it, that it will work on it, it's the same. It's one developer. Uh, the one that made the motion tracker in the first place and the one that uh, will work on the video sequencer hopefully in the coming couple releases elephant question number 19 we're getting there i'm remember i'm reading all the ones that votes have votes in them so i'm so on the top to the bottom what happens to plans oh what happened to the plans of asian 327 as a full feature film the short was so good I really thought it was gonna happen and was looking forward to watching my local cinema. And now, silence. You already have avoided to answer similar questions in the past. Um, be transparent now and choose from three possibilities. Hey, I always try to be transparent. If I... I got sidetracked maybe, but it's not that I 
I never try to avoid answering stuff, I think. Or I, at least I, I don't mean to. Okay, I have to choose from the from this option. Option B, you can't talk about it yet. No, that's uh, not correct. Option B, you honestly don't know. Uh, partially. And C, idea was abandoned for whatever reason. Um, not whatever reason. Uh, impossible to get enough money for such projects, so hope is faint like a candle flame. Levy and Hjalmarsson are busy with something completely different and they just don't care. In cinema, summer... <laughs> okay, all these options. Uh, okay, let's let's start to remove the ones that are not. Uh, you can't talk about it yet. No, that's not uh, that's not true, actually. You can, uh, I would talk if, if it was... if there was something. Uh, in cinema, summer 2022. Who knows? I don't think so, but... Never know. I don't... I don't... I don't no, no. Let's say no. <laughs> Levy and Helmerson are busy with something completely different, they just don't care. Uh, that's not correct, actually. They really care about the project. They they had meetings and they, they met even in, in, in the past about like long discussions and talks about the the how to, how to you know, move it forward, how to move the project forward. Um, the, honestly, you don't know, I partially, this is correct, I, I don't know exactly what went wrong and the idea was abandoned for whatever reason impossible to get money these are these two are actually uh, this one especially the impossible to get money for such a project yes if there was money uh, after that releasing that um, that short mo movie if there was money falling from the sky things might be a lot a lot easier because then you can just hire the the top of the top of the top that you can and help you to make it true make it happen um, from from I don't know like a the story is king you need someone to write a really good story and there are so many um, so many books and comics around the Asian 327 you know Asian 327 is based on a, a Dutch comic book from the 70s and 60s and all that era so there are so many ways to go about it that it's not easy to get it right uh, also and yeah, it's it's just it's just hard to find money for something like that. Even though we think that the film did well, uh, not really. It's hard. The same with Cosmos Laundromat. You would think like I don't know. I I love the short. I think it was. If I if I was Elon Musk and I had a couple millions, f few millions to spare, I would definitely be like, hey, these guys are making cool stuff. I'm with open source and giving it away. So why not just like hey here make a film? But unfortunately, I don't know any millionaires. Um, if you do, send them this way. Show them the Asian 3 to 7 and tell them, hey, here's uh, 10 million. Could you make it, please? Next um, question, number 20. We're reaching the number 20. Ariane Nudin. Hi, Pablo. Have you considered being a weekly uh, show where you review the artworks created by Blender users at Blender Arts? Review the artwork. Um... Yes, I actually consider for the other channel. I have another channel that is called Blender Community, Blender Community, which is the where the original Blender Today started. And I I've been doing some videos every now and then over there. Uh, we are only fourteen thousand people. Um, it's not um, it's not extremely popular, uh, but I've been, I've been trying to make some videos. I I stopped making it after the. the Blender today moved to this channel, but I've done a few and I was thinking maybe in this channel to connect more with the, that side of the community and keep the questions and stuff for the Blender channel, but um, I maybe I could do it over there. However, <laughs> I just reviewing artwork from Blender users and Blender artists, that is, uh, they should submit it. I can't just like, just enter and judge like, oh, this stuff or uh, no, no, I, I think uh, here, you know, uh, it just doesn't, uh, I don't know. Um, if people submit it for reviews, then maybe that's uh, maybe that's something that we could um, that we could uh, we could do. I would love to. I like giving feedback, but only when people ask for it. <laughs> So if you if you want feedback on a piece of artwork, uh, maybe contact me on Twitter and stuff. My info contact info is on the comments in the description. Let's uh, and that's it. That was question number twenty. But since we have this one over here, let's do a bonus 
uh, any news about Kimesh? I asked uh, Pablo Dovarro about it and his answer is so the Kimesh depends on the roadmap of the animation module the animation module again you can find it on developer.blender.org animation and rigging and here you're gonna get all the info what's what's going on all the new issue issues the unclassified the work port as well like things that the backlog and the features and the long-term stuff the um Kimesh depends on the roadmap of animation says pablo with danny we are uh, focused on making the tools but well there is uh, until there is no time to plan it with the rest of the modules i don't think it will move forward a lot so yes um Basically, it's a matter of of time for the modules to work together. Um, the animation module is the one that should take care. Especially, Kimesh is for those that don't know is the ability to add a to have a different mesh. So have the same object, a different mesh per frame. So you can have like you can change from a keyframe from a few from a cube to a sphere just just like that uh, in every frame and. Um, the, it, it involves many, it's not just the one module, the animation, it's also the interaction, the UI has a big part of it, how do you interact with it. And I'm really happy actually to hear that they are working, they're focusing on the tools, because that's what, um, that's what should be done first, right? You should try and do a proof of concept, work on the tools, polish the, how is the workflow going to be, and it, it's, it's very promising, it's the, the, genius of Pablo that we've seen all the work that he's done and the genius of uh, Daniel Martinez Lara who pushed the Grease project back when it was just an annotation tool so having those two combined I I hope and to see good stuff soon all right it's way over time one hour six it's not too bad actually I thought it would be way more but uh, I think uh, we're managing. How is everybody in the chat? Is it uh, high five, Paolo? High five, Benedict. <laughs> um, stop motion sculpting, basically, exactly what AJ said. How's the chat? I I hope I didn't miss a lot here. I was trying to focusing on the questions on Blender today. Thank you, everybody, and for asking them. And so sorry for the ones that I didn't get to. Um, to answer i'm making these threads on wednesday on blender.today on the blender community website so jump in there also remember to follow um, blender on twitter and facebook and instagram or blender today on twitter or facebook uh, twitter is mainly the, the where most things happen usually uh, in terms of updates of blender and stuff all right i think i'll have a break until next week we have seen a bunch of new stuff I, I managed to to see some of the some of the uh, things that we are gonna see next week I have I made myself a, a, a Trello board um, I should be using open source tools but uh, okay Trello board for myself this is private uh, where I made the list of videos that I want to make and these are the ones that I cannot get ready it's called performance ocean uh, stuff and then this is the ones that I have cooking and that I need to investigate and uh, yeah so that is my private list for next week I also have to review some stuff on the cloud on, on, on blender UI the asset manager and a whole lot more but so nice to hang out with you have a very very nice weekend relaxed stay off the internet a little bit maybe uh to blend something fun so you can later show me and then we can do a review at some point it's been a pleasure and if you're familiar with how things go here i warn you to to Cover your ear holes because in four fight, three, two, one. Gracias, obrigado, danke schön, danke well, grazie, merci. See you next week. Bye bye. Same place, same time. Bye bye. Arigato. <laughs>